beloved family we meet once again on this wonderful and beautiful day a day that the lord has made a day in which you shall be glad and rejoice thank you very much that you are always supportive of your platform and your channel the gospel of the freedom of the zimbabwean people we are very excited that we are moving towards the freedom the freedom of the zimbabwean people and this is what we will fight for i will fight tooth and nail until zimbabwe is delivered into the hands of its original and the real people that is the the family of the citizens of zimbabwe thank you very much for joining us those that are with us and those that are watching us from all over the world always remember to subscribe to this channel like and share it is very very important for you to do that because each time that we are live you are also notified of uh, our presence on the show so that you can join us and also enjoy the content that we share on the channel we are looking today at uh, Welshman Nubes Law Firm gives Song as a court victory over Nelson Chamisa. I think you all know about this court case that happened last time. And the judgment was reserved in the High Court of Blawai. Uh, remember, family, that uh, Song as Chabang was challenging, or rather was uh, taken the chain champion to, to court over the buildings that are in uh, Blawai. And uh, he was saying, the buildings belonged to the triple c and he was the custodian of the property of the triple c and in that affidavit you remember we discussed this issue where the nelson chamisa in his affidavit he indicated that he did not belong to the triple c anymore and he was the wrong person brought to the court and he also indicated that he was not associated with any party or any color for that matter and this issue about the color or oh, it made a lot of noise. You remember uh, the same bloggers, like the bloggers we were talking about yesterday, uh, reporters and journalists, they started interpreting it in their own way, where they were now saying, which means Amos Shibaya and uh, Gift of Stalo Sizwa are just doing their own thing. Chamisa said he does not belong there. And one of them, or even getting to an extent that uh, he said because of that affidavit, it means Chamisa will never be allowed to join any other political party because that affidavit will still be binding him as it stands within or as it stays within the, the files of the court. And yet there is nothing like that. People are just good at uh, talking about things that they don't even really understand. So finally, that issue has come in the courts. And uh, the most interesting thing is that uh, Song Ezo Shabang has been granted uh, his request to take over those offices. And funny enough, uh, Welshman Nubes Law Firm is the one that was representing Song and Sushabang in the High Court in Bulawa. And uh, we would look at it and say, okay, what is this and what is happening? And is it a business transaction or there are things that are happening? Uh, or, or uh, is he going to be benefiting out of it? Or what, what really is transpiring? So I had a tweet from uh, Zim Live, which says the Blower High Court has granted an application by the Citizens Coalition for Change Party represented by Song Ezo Shabang for the uh, ejectment of supporters of Nelson Chamisa from its Blower office after they repainted the walls and unveiled his picture uh, at the premises. So this is the story and uh, how it happened. But uh, our main issue that we are talking about today is we are looking at the factionalism that is already happening within the triple C. Uh, I think one way or the other, uh, Nube is probably trying to, you know, re-establish a relationship with Song and Shabang. This is why he had to probably uh, have his law firm taking over and uh, assisting Song and Shabang to, to romp to victory. But uh, it's not a victory at all. I, I don't know who would call it victory because the chain champion already in, the, in that court, he said he has nothing to do with the triple C, he had nothing to do with those buildings, and he never sent anybody to occupy those buildings. Whoever occupied those buildings is according to their own knowledge and understanding. He was not part of it. So I don't know even why the court had to, you know, uh, shelve that issue. I don't know why the court even had to wait before they gave their judgment i'm sure they were simply supposed to give the judgment then there how can you be taking someone to court and then the person is telling you that whatever that this man is demanding from me i don't i don't own it it's not it's not in my hands you know he, he can have it if he wants it 
why would that be shelved? Why would that judgment be reserved? You know, it is just a sign that is showing us that uh, uh, Mnangagwa is just playing around with the courts in Zimbabwe, just like we have seen uh, it happening long back. You know, it this thing of the abuse of the courts has always been there. In the Mugabe times, it was not that bad. It started when this crazy crowd, this uh, uh, troop of, of, of politicians came into play that called themselves the Second Republic. Ah, that's where we saw all systems really getting uh, destroyed and totally destroyed without, with impunity, without even shame. And we saw the courts now beginning to turn into kangaroo courts, uh, seriously, seriously, to a very great extent. So when we saw that happening, it was, yes, bad during the very first time, but the worst part of it, of the abuse of the courts and how the courts were totally exposed was when this story of Songe Shavang started. This is the story that really nailed the very last nail in the coffin of the judiciary system of Zimbabwe to the point that all over the world, everyone who knows about these issues that were uh, attended into the, in, in these courts, how the judgments were given, you know, in a shameful and embarrassing way. Right. But who cares? Because we are dealing with a leadership that does not care about anything. Mnangagwa does not care about anything. ZANPF, they don't care about anything. As long as they wake up and are able to unlock the doors into those offices that give them an opportunity to, you know, uh, steal and to do all those uh, dirty deals of theirs and to continue looting the, the, the coffers of the nation. They don't care in, anymore about whatever could be happening out there. Yet in the process, lives of people are being destroyed. Lives are seriously being destroyed. Last time we were talking about the judges themselves. And we we're saying it is going to be very difficult for these judges to be able to be employed in any other nation again. And remember, we we're saying these judgments that they give in the Zimbabwean courts, they don't just fly away by the wind. They are recorded and they are shelved and they wait for, for a hundred, even a hundred years or more still kept as a record. And when it is a bogus judgment, like the bogus judgments that we are seeing happening in the courts in, in favor of this song, Shaba, I'm telling you, it has just destroyed the careers of these judges. Just We just thank God because these judges already, they are very old people anyway. They are close to going, close to, you know, retirement. Because, but uh, it's, it's bad for the magistrates because we have some magistrates that are fairly, fairly very young that are being used again by Mnangagwa. And these are the guys that are going to have a tough time because they will still need to pursue career unless they will have to dump totally the, the career of being uh, uh, court officials. Then they can pursue some other different uh, uh, course, uh, courses and then maybe probably they can go there. But still, whatever that they did can still hunt them, can still haunt them uh, in the future. You see, because the same... Uh, reaping of the constitution that they are doing now, it can still come back again as a, a, as a crime, as a crime that they can be judged for. They can be taken to court for that, for those crimes. So even if they can run to other careers, they will still be wanted again with the law of Zimbabwe. The moment that Zimbabwe comes back and we have a normal country, a normal judiciary, normal police force, normal army, normal politicians, and a normal president, then all these issues are going to come back again to life. And a lot of people are going to get into serious, serious trouble. So ZANPF and Mnangagwa, while they think it is about themselves only, they are forgetting that it is affecting many, many people. Remember, there are even police guys right now as we speak. We have done a lot of atrocities. We have killed people. We have shot people. We have been raping people. We have got soldiers. Remember the 2019 when there was, was it 2019? 2019, yes, where there were those uh, uh, demonstrations that happened and soldiers went around and a lot of women were raped around Harare. You still remember? And remember, those people are known and they are going to answer for it. Today, they are still protected by the scarf, but the scarf is, is, is losing ground every day as we are moving. The scarf is getting powerless and weak and it is go eventually going to be null and void just very, very soon, because we are in that season of their exit. Those people are going to remain exposed. 
You can never stand in a court of law and you say, as a soldier, you raped a woman because you were given a, a, a command to go and do that. It, it doesn't hold water. Because in the Constitution, even in their training, these officers, they are told that they are supposed to defy illegal uh, orders. They have a right to defy illegal orders and nothing happens to them. But unfortunately, in Zimbabwe, they are failing to defy illegal orders that are coming from politicians. So at the end of the day, what will happen is these guys are going to be found wanting. Police guys that are abusing people right now, killing people and everything, all the like that they are doing. I'm telling you, records are there. You are going to see court cases beginning now to rise up in the courts. There are some people that have been injured. Some people have lost their eyes. Some people have lost their arm because the police were out there and they brutalized them. As an individual, somebody can take that up with the courts. In a normal country, that police officer will be brought to court and they can never blame the government that was there at that time for, for what they did because they are told that you have a responsibility to defy any illegal orders that you are given as an officer. So they will have to answer for it. So this is what we are saying that while Munangago is playing around with all these uh, arms of government and you know these important institutions, we, we go everywhere. We, even to the we can go as far as the passport offices, Makombe building. There are people that have done things there, and the records are there. A lot of other corrupt activities that are being done go to the GMP, go to wherever all other parastatals. They have been things that are, are, are have been done by people under the disguise of the scarf of zan pf no it's thinking that they will be protected forever and all those people they are going to answer for all these crimes i'm telling you a lot of zimbabweans that are not even politicians will find themselves being dragged to the courts because of the things that they did do you think that old man who spoke uh, who is the chairman of ZANPF, who spoke deep down in, the, in the, that village and he said, I've been sent by Mnangagwa to say that uh, Chamisa must be killed. Do you think that old man, if uh, somebody would take that, that issue up with the courts when the, the new country is here, when Zimbabwe has come, do you think that old man will survive it? He won't survive it. He won't. I know, of course, the chain champion will not do it himself. But somebody, a citizen, an ordinary citizen, can take that issue and take that madala to court. And that madala will go to prison because of that. So many people in Zimbabwe, and we want to warn Varakash and all these people that are being used by, 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 by ZANU-PF, whether you are police, whether you are in the army, whether you are Varakashi, whether you are ZANU-PF youth, whether you are border gazi, well, I don't care who you are. The things that you are doing right now, today, I am telling you, just imagine that guy who, who, who that um, uh, ferret guy who ran with a gun uh, to, to abduct, uh, was it Takuz Wangadzwari? You remember that guy? And right now, up to now, he's still being paraded on social media, on Twitter. Every time people, some people are still posting about that guy. Do you think the internet will forget? Do you think social media will forget? That one is a record already. And it is going to haunt that guy. And that guy, you might find that now uh, he does not even have a rank what, in whatever department, whether it's ferret from police or from CIO or from whatever. But still, that guy, you might find that he has nothing to himself. He does probably he does not even own a house. He's actually renting somewhere. He's just maybe renting two rooms. He does not even own a car. By the time that Munangagwa and his cronies are going to be flying away and running from Zimbabwe, because of a time that is coming very, very soon. Those guys, they can't even board a taxi, a combi to run away from one, one from Kwazana to the next uh, uh, location. They can't. So they are going to be just caught in the very same place, you know, just like, like, like small tortoises. They will be caught like that and then taken to court. And they will start to pay for these things that ZANPF is causing them to do today. It is very unfortunate very very unfortunate so all these people and what they are doing just imagine even song as himself do you think song as will be able to survive in zimbabwe he won't live in zimbabwe he won't be able to survive in zimbabwe and with all these shenanigans that is done with the judges and the courts when the judges are being looked for song as can also be looked for and we can demand in any nation that would uh, shelter him 
that is needed to answer issues in Zimbabwe. And he will be brought back. I'm telling you, by that time, the Sadiq will have changed also. We will not be having this brotherhood Sadiq that is protecting uh, each other's back. We'll be having a solid Sadiq there that will be having a new government. Remember, I told you that the move, the wind that is here, the wind of change is not only going to be stopping in Zimbabwe, it's coming to South Africa, it's going to all these liberation parties. They are going down. They are going down. Remember that meeting in Victoria Falls? They were discussing about this because they know that their life is in danger. They are going. And by that time, if they run around such countries, they, they will be taken back to Zimbabwe very, very quickly. If they run into Africa, Sadiq can be lobbied to use African Union to bring them out in. If they run out, they will still be brought in because some other human rights organizations will start to make noise and Interpol will be alerted. These guys will be brought back to Zimbabwe to answer for what they have done. So this is it. Let them continue to abuse the courts as much as they want. Let the Welshman Nubes and their law firm go and support for whatever reason that Nube is doing it anyway. They are, in, they, are one, they are one people. They are in one camp anyway. One camp not in terms of agreement, in terms of just being sell out. Let them continue and sell out and think that they will sell out to ZANPF until forever. They are forgetting that nothing lasts forever. Because we are saying this time around, we are standing for the freedom of the Zimbabwean people. Freedom is coming to Zimbabwe, whether they can support ZANU-PF, whether they can stand with ZANU-PF, whether the courts can stand and support ZANU-PF. But it's one thing that we are telling them today, right when they are still listening, we are telling them that nothing lasts forever. Zimbabwe is going to be free very soon. And we, the eagles, are flying high. We are flying in prayer and in declaration that God brings the promise that he has given to the people of Zimbabwe, that the season of the freedom is now, and Zimbabwe is going to be free. And all those that have sinned against the people of Zimbabwe, they shall pay through their noses. I wish people would begin to repent now. This is the time that people that are being used by Zanpi, Varakashis, the police, the soldiers, whoever they are, they must begin to think about the season that is coming. It's going to be a very difficult season. Ordinary people who don't have any cent in their pocket will not be able to live in Zimbabwe. And they won't be even able to escape because they won't be having finances to help them escape with their families. So it's going to be very difficult. Some people are going to run and leave their wives and children in Zimbabwe and they won't be able to come back again. They will run away when nobody chases them because the wicked shall flee when nobody pursues them. But the righteous are as bold as lions. So family, this is what it is. So we will continue to pray and to make sure that the plans of God are fulfilled over the nation of Zimbabwe. Poshi Angube, my sister, what you say is Kwazwai, my citizens and champions, blue train passengers. Thank you very much for that greeting. Yes, Yudha Macho, my sister, what you say is greetings, Chatufa family. Thank you very much. If Bote says, Tripanum Kuma Chatufa, God is in it. God definitely is in it. My uh, memory God says, good evening, Chatufa family. Thank you very much for being here and also sharing with us uh, your thoughts. Uh, Poshi Angube says they should learn from South Africa. They are old whites from a apartheid era who are still dragged to court for things they did during those days. Yes, they must open their eyes because the time of reckoning is coming. Uh, Ishmael uh, Mundeta says, citizens, let's intensify our prayers for a normal Zimbabwe. Change is coming. God bless and protect our change champion, Advocate Chamisa. Thank you very much. We, we, we are in total agreement with you. Exactly what you are saying is what we believe. Uh, Kleta says, good afternoon. Uh, Chatufa family, our real channel. Thank you very much for joining us. Kumbula Thomas, thank you. Florent Love, my sister, how are you, man? Hello. Thank you for joining us. And family, I'm so grateful that you have been with me on the show. We are going to be having a, another show at exactly half past seven on the main channel, Chatufa Television Production, where we are going to be talking about how Munangagwa is going to be using Senga Shabang and the Triple C faction of Shabang to try and uh, win the Matevelland hearts so that probably he could win the referendum because he knows that the referendum is definitely, definitely coming. Kampala, how are you? Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let me just, uh, I'm seeing uh, great comments coming. Let me just uh, read them. Good afternoon, even though those receiving cars may, may later be found in court for receiving proceeds of crime and aiding a criminal uh, to launder money. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the law is stubborn. The government hates opposition parties 
let us just pray god knows and he will make a way of our liberation it will be just a day when god's uh, answer will prevail definitely it's just a day and the day is fast approaching and the people of zanpf and the Varakash 